morning, church. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. That is correct. We're still in Easter tide, right? Let us continue to celebrate Easter every Sunday. Yes, it's the third Sunday of Easter, but we are in Easter, right? That is the season of Easter. So a couple of things uh, before we get started. Please take a note of all of our announcements. There are quite a few announcements. And uh, I really would like for you to know what's happening here Monday through Friday. We have a wonderful Bible study on Tuesday, that on, on Wednesday morning that Pastor Larry leads. The men's prayer uh, group will meet at Skillets on Tuesday. As a matter of fact, every Tuesday this month. We will also have a Bible study uh, based on the chosen, open to everybody in the congregation uh, at 1030 on Tuesday in the conference room. Join us if you'd like to meet and uh, be with us for that. Uh, Okay, where am I going to start? So as a chaplain for the Sarasota County Fire Department, I was called on uh, to uh, preside over a funeral uh, for a lieutenant uh, in uh, the Cobb County, Georgia, fire service there. Uh, He was in the fire marshal's office and a wonderful man, uh, James uh, Joel Slack. Uh, We are remembering him today in the prayers of the dearly departed and we are also uh, praying for his wife Shirley and uh, their children, uh, Kristen, Jamie, and Nathan, and also Micah and, uh, and all those who are grieving. Uh, We are also praying for uh, the family of Kathy Lasko, uh, a neighbor over here, and uh, praying for her uh, husband and son, Kevin and Eric. Uh, I have some other prayer requests, too. Uh, Stephen Moore, Jr., somebody who is in the neighborhood here and often frequents our food pantry. Uh, He was arrested, so we are praying for him during this time of incarceration. We're praying for Pastor David Wagner and Becky Heaps. Uh, Pastor Wagner and Becky, uh, Becky is a good friend of my wife's. She swam with her at UB. Both of them are in the throes of a very, very serious fight with cancer, and we pray for their family uh, as uh, it's a very, very serious time. And of course, uh, there's more to pray for, right? We are praying for Uh, this uh, horrible unfolding situation in the Middle East. Uh, I didn't sleep much last night uh, because this is of grave concern to all uh, inhabitants of this globe. Uh, As uh, the um, uh, escalation of events continue between Iran, Lebanon, and Israel, and uh, other allies and partners, it has potential to become something which is Um, not uh, different than what happened uh, in Vietnam, my friends. So uh, I was talking to uh, 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 Judge Dick, uh, who is here, who served uh, there, and we're going to try to have a time where we can have a discussion and uh, all of us can be a little bit more educated. And as peacemakers, as peace bringers, there are things that we can do. Obviously, we can't uh, directly influence Middle East uh, foreign policy, but as uh, people who have the peace which passes understanding, uh, the peace we have in Jesus Christ, there's things that we can do uh, here uh, in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in in the world. And uh, we need to be about that, especially during this time. And if necessary, we need to be also vocal when it comes to uh, how response should be, uh, could, should be, uh, I think, um, tempered anyway. So please join me in prayer, uh, and uh, we pray for Israel, we pray for Iran, we pray for Lebanon, we pray for the people in Gaza, we pray for the people in Ukraine and Russia, and uh, the people in Taiwan and everywhere where there is conflict in Haiti, uh, it is very important that we are reminded that being a Christian means we are active in our faith. Okay, that was a lot right there, but uh, it's important to say that. Uh, Please look for an announcement that will come out uh, probably this week regarding that forum that I mentioned. Uh, At this time, uh, I also would like to uh, just uh, 
you know, remind you that we have a coffee hour following this service. If anybody would like to uh, participate and help to coordinate a coffee hour, that would be wonderful. Uh, during this time of the year when uh, some of our snowbirds fly home, uh, sometimes it's uh, good to regroup and to start to have different people step up and, and help provide that hospitality. Uh, see me, talk to me if, uh, if you're uh, so inclined to do that. Uh, also, um, our food pantry on Thursdays, we could use some new folks in the evening uh, just because people get tired and uh, everybody should know that they can take a break once in a while. So uh, you need to be trained. You need to come down. Uh, but please come down and uh, join us, especially during the distribution time between uh, 5 and, uh, and 6.30. Okay, that's it by way of announcements. Uh, do we have any young people here today? I don't see any for a children's moment. So uh, we will continue and not have one today. Uh, but you're all children of God, so we'll incorporate some of that into the regular sermon. Uh, at this time, I invite the congregation to please rise as we continue with the confession of faith and um, the confession of our sin and the words of forgiveness. Oh, and Bob Woody's here today. <coughs> Thank you very much, Bob, for blessing us by being on our organ bench these couple of weeks. And our own Hannah is serving as our conductor. And thank you, Hannah, for sharing those special talents that you have. We wish David and Tom a wonderful vacation as they cruise around, uh, you know, following seas and uh, pleasant wind and good food. So, but thank you for being here and helping us uh, sail smoothly also. So let us begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the church of Christ and by Christ's authority alone, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from the book of Acts, the third chapter. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and the righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect help in the presence of all of you. 
And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Word of God, word of life. wonders for the faithful. The Lord does wonders for the faithful. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your Bed. The Lord does wonders for the faithful. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O you have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, O oh Lord, make me rest secure. The Lord does wonders for the The second reading is from 1 John, the third chapter. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed, but what we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. O Lord. Jesus stood himself, stood among the disciples and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. 
And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are the words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I just want to do a mic check. Can everybody hear me fine? Yeah? yeah? If it gets a little iffy, raise your hand, because I had to change out my mic. Okay, so once upon a time, there was a, a legendary fisherman in this town. And uh, there was a new person that showed up in this town, and he heard about this legendary fisherman that always got a great catch. So he went down to the dock, and he begged to go on the boat. Well, the fisherman said, sure, come on down. So they get on the boat, and as they start leaving the dock, the newbie says to the avid angler, I see you don't have any fishing poles, no reels. You just have a big tackle box and a net. He goes, we have everything we need for a successful fishing venture. Don't you worry. So they speed out, and they go to the secluded cove. And there the fishermen cast the anchor, and they sit down, and they're waiting. And the fisherman opens up the tackle box and he takes out a stick of dynamite and he ties it to a brick. He lights it and he throws it overboard and kaboom! A big shock wave underneath rocks the boat, water flies up and then all these fish float to the surface. The man takes his net and starts to scoop the fish and just then the newbie stands up reaches in his pocket and pulls out his id and says aha i am the new game warden and i caught you you know you can't blow up fish well the old salt doesn't miss a beat he just opens up his tackle box takes another stick of dynamite out lights it and hands it to the, the old game warden and he says are you going to sit there and talk, or are you going to fish? <laughs> I had no choice there, right? Well, our Lord gives us a choice, whether we're just going to sit there, talk about it, or we're going to fish. And believe it or not, today's gospel is actually a fish story. Not your typical fish story. Probably didn't see this one coming. Today it's a fish story because Jesus is asking for something to eat and they bring him some broiled fish. But it's much bigger than that. There was a great Harvard educator, a biologist. His name was uh, Dr. Louis Agassiz. Not an easy name to say. But he was the father of like modern observation science. He was a paleontologist and a biologist, and he would spend his time teaching his students how to really stay focused. God bless you. So what he would do is the new students would come into Harvard, and he would give them all a jar with a stinky fish in it, in formaldehyde. They would have to pull the stinky fish out, place it on the tray. I know, Judy, that face is, it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's all in the name of science now, right? And have that fish there. And they would have to observe the fish. 
and use only their eyes and their hands to examine it. Now, for new students in his class, this would go on for days and days. He would say, look at the fish. What do you see? Day after day, people didn't know what to answer, Dr. Agassiz. And he would just say, look at the fish. Well, one of his star pupils that later became a scientist also recalled the story of his own experience. And he said, after three days of looking at this fish, he said, uh, you know, Dr. Agassiz, I, I, I see more now than I did in the beginning. He said, good. So that night he had an epiphany, and he comes into class and he says, I see that the fish along the meridian line has organs that are paired on either side. And Dr. Agassi said, that was, uh, th that was great. So the student thought he was done. And he says, uh, okay, what do you want me to do next? He says, look at the fish. He wasn't done. So we are called also to look at the fish. And what is the fish really for us? Um, in, in some ways, all of what Jesus did was like a big fishing trip. If you ever planned a fishing trip, right? You have to uh, put together your crew, you have to get your stuff, and then you have, to, uh, you have to go out there and you have to fish. From the very beginning, you remember Jesus when he was walking along calling his disciples, right? Where did he go first? He went and called them from their nets. Right? Peter, James, and John, all fishermen. And Jesus tells them, you're going to fish for people, right? I remember as a kid, I will make you fishers of men. We used to sing this song with like casting this big imaginary pole. I loved it. Didn't understand it. But Jesus was preparing them to be disciples, but also evangelists to get out there with the good news. And the good news didn't even reveal itself fully until now. Now the good news is revealed in the resurrection of Jesus. Now let us orient ourselves in Luke's gospel before we go any further. So in Luke's gospel, this is Easter Sunday. I know we looked at Mark already, we looked at John, but this resurrection account makes us understand what did the disciples, uh, have, what was their reaction to the resurrection? And it makes us ask the question too, what is our reaction to the resurrection? Are we going to just sit around or are we going to fish, right? In the way that Jesus did. So on the day of the resurrection, the women go to the tomb in Luke and uh, they see that the stone is rolled away and Jesus is not there. There are two men in dazzling white and they greet them and they say, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen. They run back. They're full of joy. They tell the other disciples. The other disciples, they don't believe them. They thought it to be an idle tale. After all, it's a lot to take in. So Peter runs down there, and it says that he was amazed. It doesn't say he believes. He's amazed. Then Cleopas and another disciple are on the road to Emmaus, not too far away. And while they're on the road, a stranger shows up. And uh, the stranger says, why do you look so sad? And they said, well, didn't you hear about Jesus of Nazareth, this wonderful, righteous person from God that was crucified? And what's worse now, his body is not there. And some say he's risen. And that stranger opened their minds on that road to Emmaus and started to, to share the scripture so that they could understand. Then it was getting late, and Cleopas and the other one were going to stop for the night, but the stranger kept on walking, but they urged the stranger to come. They sat at a table, and then the stranger lifted up bread, blessed it, broke it. And at that moment, their eyes were open, and they thought it was Jesus. They saw Jesus, and then he disappears. Now, Cleopas and the other disciple, they get up and they run back to Jerusalem. They tell the other disciples what happened. And that's where this gospel lesson starts. And Jesus shows up again. 
and he offers peace. Now one thing when you go fishing, you don't want to spook the fish. You don't want to scare the fish. Jesus shows up. He's from the dead. He has his wounds still. He is there among them. So he brings a word of peace. He doesn't want to scare them. He wants to love them. You see, Jesus is not about catching fish like Rome caught people. Rome caught people and killed them and crucified them. Jesus is all about catching and releasing, right? Catching the fish and releasing the fish or the person from sin and death, from despair and hopelessness, to release them from the bondage of being stuck. And that can only happen through a transformation of each fish or each person. If we are not transformed, if our minds aren't blown and open, we're going to be stuck in the stagnant waters of our own limited imagination, of our broken relationships, of our limited physical body, of our limited mental capacity. But transformed with the mind of Christ, well, that's something completely different. But before we, we race to that understanding, perhaps we should also talk about what Jesus' actions were. So he comes and he eats fish, right? It's very important that he eats fish. This is in Luke's gospel. Luke, of course, is a Greek traveling companion of Paul. This is written later on. It is written at the beginning of the movement of the way. People following Jesus, making sense of Jesus. And uh, it's important that Jesus chose to ask for some food and the disciples rendered fish to him. Because fish was something that could unite the, the Greek world and also the Jewish world. There were a lot of other food restrictions, but they could agree on the broiled fish. But they could also agree on the ultimate fish. In the second century, the symbol for Christianity that was most prevalent was the ichthos, the fish. You know the symbol, right? The ichthos. It looks like this. And when you draw it, you draw a line this way, and then you draw a line that way, right? You've seen it on bumper stickers on the back of people's cars. But it's very important. That word ichthos is an anagram. So the, every single letter signifies a different word. Jesus Christos, Theos, Quios, Soter. Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. That is ichthos, the fish. So when ancient Christians especially during times of persecution, like when Domitian was killing Christians, if they wanted to connect with one another when they met out and you suspected that someone or another was a brother or a sister in Christ, what they would do is, in the sand, draw half of that, just that moon. And if the other person was a Christian, they would know to complete that. And then they would be united, not alone, two of them would be together, and Christ would be with them. For when two or three are gathered, there he is in the midst of us, right? So the ichthus, right? The fish, the ultimate fish that we feast upon in the Eucharist. I know you say, what do you mean? We eat bread and wine. We do eat bread and wine, but we eat the fish. We eat Jesus Christ. Son of God, our Savior, every time we come here. And it prepares us to be anglers in the world, not just to sit around, but to fish, to fish for others. 
in the same way that Christ did, in a loving way, in a kind way, in a way that brings hope, a way that defeats despair. But first, brothers and sisters, our minds need to be blown. Those early disciples, after Jesus offers them a word of peace and shows his body to them, that he's not a ghost, and eats the fish, then it says that he opens their minds. The late uh, Peter Marshall, who was a chaplain for the United States Senate, was a great storyteller. He tells this one story that has always stuck with me, the keeper of the spring. In the story of the keeper of the spring, there was an old man that lived up in the, the hills of the upper part of Austria where the Alps kind of come together. And he took care of the springs way up on top of the mountain and made sure that they were clear so that all the waters that flowed down to the villages was pristine. And this water was used, of course, for irrigation so that crops and flowers would grow. It was used to water all the livestock so they could have healthy water. The people drank the water as well. And because of the lush vibrance of this town, they had a lot of tourism. Well, it came to pass that after the keeper of the spring was hired by this town, after a generation or so, people forgot all about him. And they were looking at the budget, and they said, what is this line item here for the keeper of the spring? We need money. We'll just get rid of him. So they got rid of the keeper of the spring. Everything was fine for a little while, but then soon what happened was debris started to fall in the stream and the water became less. Then it started to tinge. It was yellow. Then it became brown. Then it dried up and the lush countryside was not very pleasant to look at anymore. People were starting to get ill and the tourism stopped. There is so much going on in your life. You got a lot of things going on. You got relationship issues, family things. You got physical problems, things, concerns for yourself and others. You have grief that you're dealing with. You have a lot of things that are falling into your stream constantly. But brothers and sisters, our Lord Jesus Christ wants to remove them. Wants to remove them by opening up your mind. To kind of reorient you on what is most important. You see, it really matters what you put first. It matters who you say you are when you identify yourself. If you are identifying yourself as one of the Lord's catch. Well, that means everything, right? Because you know that you were caught and you were released and you've been loved and you've been unburdened and you're free. You're free. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and you know what you're free to do? You're free to fish in the same way and to bring the peace and love and understanding, the hope and the joy of Jesus Christ to others. Amen. But you got to get in the water. You can't spook the fish. There's a whole change that needs to happen. It's a revolution within your mind, within your body. Because Jesus wants all of you. And, and, and wants all of you just out of deep love. And want you to feel that deep love too for every other child of God. Regardless of what they look like, how tall they are, short they are, what they wear, who they marry, what they do. These are all children of God. And we are called to be fishers of people. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So as we come forward for the meal, as we come to have our fish dinner, and as we are, in many ways, transformed yet again, because it's a constant renewal, please remember how much God loves you and everything that Christ did for you. And remember that you have this wonderful opportunity, as long as you have breath, to share this with your neighbor, with your friend, with your family member, with the person you pass in the street. It's the best news. So let us not just sit there. Let us fish. Amen. Amen.
together we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the prayers. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. O God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers as we share the holy meal that is the body and blood of Jesus given for us. Lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity and abundant life. God of grace. Hear our prayer. O God, our creator, you bring forth all life on earth. Calm storms bring water to parched places and protect the climate that this planet would sustain life in all its variety. God of grace. Hear our prayer. O God, our savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. We pray for a just peace in Gaza, Ukraine, Haiti, and in more than 15 armed conflicts in Africa. God of grace. Hear our prayer. O oh God, our elder, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines and anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief, hope, and uncertainty. We pray especially for those on our prayer list and those we name before you now, aloud or in our hearts. We pray for our brother Stephen Moore. We pray for Becky Heaps and Pastor David Wagner. We pray for their family as well. We pray for the people of Israel, Iran, Lebanon, and all others who are at risk of being drawn into that conflict. We pray for the family of Kathy Lasko. God of grace. O oh God, our center, you bring all people together in you. Help us to remember our identity and purpose in our ministry. Move us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to share in beloved community. God of grace. Hear our prayer. O oh God, our resting place, your son promised that we are held in your love forever. We remember our beloved who have died especially Fire Lieutenant James Joel Slack. As we remember in love, comfort those who mourn. God of grace. Hear our prayer. We also remember and give thanks for the life of Kathy Lasko. And we pray for Lieutenant Slack's wife, Shirley, and children, Nathan, Jamie, Kristen, and Micah. Almighty God, we... We thank you for your resurrection reminders that we have purpose, we have mission, and that we are loved. Help us to be recentered by you over and over again. 
so that we can feel the freedom that we have in your message of love and use that freedom to bring freedom to others, to feed others, to clothe others, to care for others as you do us. God of grace, into your hands, most merciful God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. Please rise if you are able. Just as Christ came and brought words of peace on that day of resurrection, so now we share in Christ's peace before we feast on Jesus. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share Christ's peace with one another.
let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We live to Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give us thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy, eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ is now, Christ is risen, Christ will come. Therefore, O oh God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And so now we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. 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 Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Uh, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. in Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God,
please rise. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. receive a blessing. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and forever. Amen.
You were wonderful. <laughs> when we have a stop, we never know what we're getting. You know? And but I'm turning towards the music. So I would be the one that would go, "Oh my God, where did you get that from?" We've had a few of those in our past. Thank you.